to get up. I think I heard the mail plane landing. I better go get the mail. I haven't been in the bedroom since my wife left me two months ago. I just can't. I remember stepping outside that day. It was beautiful. I could see Mason in the distance. This was the first time in weeks it was me going to get the mail, rather than anyone else. First time since she left me. Mason, how are you this morning? I couldn't be better, Blake. This morning really does have that essence of greatness to it, doesn't it? That crisp air, that gorgeous sun. Days like this always remind me why I moved out here. Perfect. And how are you, my boy? I'm getting by. I know it's hard, Blake. I remember when my dear Ava left me. It took me months to get back to the happy man I am. Just keep your head high, your spirit strong, and everything will be all right, okay? Why don't you spend time with your neighbors? I know mine helped me. Thanks for your kind words, Mason. I'll keep them in mind. I've got to give everyone their mail now anyway, so I might as well go see how everyone's doing. Thank you. Anytime, my friend. Just keep moving. We only die when we stop moving. I was a little nervous about seeing the rigs, only because they are my closest and dearest friends. I had been blocking them and everyone else out of my life for weeks prior to that day. I hoped they weren't upset with me. Well, look who we have here. Every Monday for weeks you've been leaving our mail on the porch and not knocking to say hello like you normally do. It's very difficult explaining where someone is to a six-year-old, you know, especially when they only live 10 steps away. Sorry, Anna. It's more like 14 steps, though, which makes all the difference. It's okay. We were just happy to know you're still alive. You've had us all worrying. Come in to see Marcus and Jada. How are you, old friend? Have you been getting the fish I've been leaving on your front porch? Yes, I have, thank you. A little dangerous with all the bears and wolves out there, but <laughs> thank you all the less. <laughs> well, I had to make sure you were alive somehow, didn't I? I loudly placed the fish on your porch, hid in some bushes, and watched you scramble outside to retrieve it before the wildlife did. <laughs> <laughs> I really do appreciate it, Marcus. I know I haven't been around lately. Didn't want to pass my misery to anyone, you know? Ah, nonsense. That's why we're here. This community always sticks together, no matter what. We're always here for you, Blake. All of us. Thank you. You know what? I've got a great idea. I'm about to go to the river and get the daily catch. Why don't you come with me? We can wash all your worries away downstream. How about it? Hmm, that sounds like a great idea. Perfect! I'll go get the boat and beers ready, and you just join me when you can. See you in a bit. Blake! 
Why have you been hiding from me? Now why would I do a thing like that? Hide from my favorite person? I was looking for you too, you know. We just must not have crossed paths while we were looking. Okay, I guess that just about makes sense. You're forgiven. Is there anything in the mail for me? Only for mommy and daddy, I'm afraid. Aw, no fair. Don't worry, I'll make sure there is something in the mail for you next Monday, okay? Promise? Promise. <laughs> Thank you. Sunset was almost upon us. That time of year, daylight didn't last long. I was looking forward to fishing on the river with Marcus. We used to do it a lot. I could see Marcus setting up the boat up ahead. It was calming to see that nothing had changed in my absence. I usually row the boat upstream a little, just around the river bend. That's where I always find the big ones. So honestly, Blake, just us two men out here? How are you really feeling, my friend? In all honesty, I feel a little lost. Like the world is passing me by, but I don't have what it takes to jump back on it anymore. Not without her, anyway. Oh, come on, Blake. There's more to life than women. Easy for you to say. You have Anna and your lovely daughter. Hey, I understand. But I didn't always have them in my life. True. Look, I know it's hard now, but it'll get easier. You'll see. A few months down the line, you won't even remember why you were upset. What was the real reason she left, anyway? She just couldn't handle the life out here. Not everyone can. Everyone's different, I guess. Some of us want this life. Living off the fat of the land fishing down rivers, creating your own heat from trees we've cut down, all while constantly surrounded by scenic views. Perfect. Some, though, they don't understand that. I'm guessing she went back to California? Of course, the Golden State. Very different from our state motto, the last frontier. Very different lifestyles indeed. It's no wonder she fled back. Why didn't she go back with her? She didn't want me to. It was just over. We'd been rocky for months prior. It would have only been a wasted effort. I understand. Right. Enough about the past. It's time to find what the future has in store for our stomachs. Grab the rod there, and we'll start.
Not gonna lie, Blake. I was worried we weren't gonna catch anything just then. <laughs> I think you need to get out more. It's been too long since you came out with me and Betty. Betty? Yeah. I decided to name the boat. It gave her more of a character. Someone I could talk to on long days out on the river. Hmm. I think it may be you that needs to get out more, Marcus. Right. I'll race you back to the house. Your fish is in the boat. Grab it and we'll go. Huh? Bastard. I was on the way to drop the fish off to the Riggs household when I saw Anna looking very thoughtful into the well. Ah, good, you're back. Did you catch any good ones for us? Oh, but of course. Good. I'll cook them for dinner later. But right now we've got other issues. There's no water going to the well. Could you go to the water tower for us? Just to see why no water is coming through? Marcus has gone for his after-fishing nap, so he's no use to us. As you're cooking the dinner, of course I will. Thank you, Blake. Water tower was often breaking down. Sometimes the heating mechanics fail, leaving the water to freeze. Definitely a man's job to repair. But as I was walking that? to the tower, the first strange incident occurred. I saw a man running, running from me. I chased him hey, towards you. the water tower. Hey! A herd of deer ran in front of me, blocking my way for a moment. This moment was long enough for the man to fade from view. When I finally arrived at the water tower, the man was nowhere to be seen. Upon inspection of the tower though, it appeared that the system had been tampered with. The wheel that controlled the water pressure was missing. I had to find it. I found the wheel in the old shack near the tower. I grabbed it and went to put it back in its correct place. I got the water flowing again as darkness had crawled over the sky. It was time to see how Anna was getting on at the well. I'd always enjoyed nighttime in Alaska, especially away from any major towns or cities. 
that way you don't have any light pollution ruining your view of the stars. And that aurora, I never get over how beautiful it is. Dinner's almost ready. All in all, it was a good first day back into the real world.